Hello everyone and welcome to part one of a three-part series on how to make acorn bread. That's right, we're taking these acorns right here and we're going to turn them into a delicious bread that is sure to turn you into a forger the same way that it did to me. So, number one, we have to actually gather these. Normally I would do this with a tarp, but I couldn't find mine, so this is my tarp for right now. And the quickest way that I found to do this is to gather as many as you can first and then sort through them after to figure out which ones are best. And within 10 to 20 minutes, we're gonna have more than we know what to do with. Let's do that right now. There is nothing worse than harvesting a bunch of acorns only to find that they weren't really good on the inside. So before I start harvesting, I always crack open five or six to test them. Here I'm looking at one on the inside, which looks great. Yellow all the way through and no blemishes. This is a good sign that we are ready to start harvesting. And there we have it. Look at that. So these are all the acorns that we harvested in less than 10 minutes. So now that we have all these, let's look at what we need to do to sort them because there are certainly ones that we wanna go ahead and not use because they're going to result in acorn meat that isn't good at all. So the two main ones that you're gonna look out for immediately are caps on the acorns and a tiny hole. So let's look at that. So this one right here, has one of those tiny holes. And uh, what that means is that there was an acorn weevil, which is this little bug, and then it bored its way out. That's what, this is actually an exit hole, so it's not in here anymore. Uh, that means that inside... So we're gonna toss those immediately. Another one, even though that they look really nice, here's an acorn that the cap is attached to it still. And those aren't good, that's where the tree decided that something was wrong with this acorn and it aborted it early, so we don't want those either. First, we're gonna visually inspect these to the best of our ability, and then we're gonna do the water test, which I'll show you in a second. So, let's go ahead and visually inspect as many of these as we can as quickly as possible. All right, so now we have harvested our acorns, we've visually inspected them, so let's see how well this water separation method can work. Here we have a pitcher of water and our acorns, so we're just going to take them and dump them straight in. Right off the bat, we can see it looks like it's working. Some go to the bottom, these should be good, and here are some on top. So we're gonna go ahead and just scoop those out by hand and then set them off to the side. We don't need these. Then I just take out a strainer like this one, any kind, and I'm going to dump out the water in the acorns, just leaving these acorns behind. So these should all be good. So let's take these acorns right here over to the dehydrator because we need to get them drying as soon as possible. It's one of the most important things to do at this stage of the process. There are several different ways to dehydrate your acorns. But given that I'm living in an apartment without access to much outside space, I mainly have to use a dehydrator. I know people who dry it out in the sun and that works great. One note, if you're trying to use an oven, they tend to not be able to get quite cool enough. They'll get too hot. And as you can see right here, I'm setting my dehydrator to 100 degrees. Now, what I found is that actually that's even a little bit too hot too. So maybe just at the beginning, set it to 100 degrees, but after the first couple hours, drop it down to 90 or 95. Otherwise, you might scorch your acorns just a little bit. So how long do we need to dry for? Well, in practice, it can be anywhere between several days to several weeks, depending on different factors. But I like to let the acorns tell me when they're dry. So take a look at what we're doing. When I try to break this acorn, it doesn't break. It's super difficult, dry all the way through, and extremely brittle. That's what we're looking for, for the acorns to tell us that they're done and completely dry. Now let's contrast that with the current batch, which is in the middle of drying. So this was a test several days in. And when I break it open and try to bend it, it does bend. So this is showing me that there is still moisture in this acorn. It's not completely dry yet, so it needs more time to dry. 
This one is from the same batch just a couple days later and look at that. You see how difficult it is for me to crack it? I, I actually can't do it. It's completely dried all the way through. That's what we're looking for to ensure that we've dried our acorns completely. And trust me, this is not a step you want to skip out on. You want to ensure they're as dry as possible, otherwise you could lose an entire batch to mold. Now that our acorns are dry, we can move on to the next step. But if you're not ready, you can always store them for a pretty long time. I recommend a container that allows for airflow such as this one and storing it in a cool, dark, and dry space. This will give you the best results and minimize the chance of any spoilage. All right, everyone, and that concludes part one of our journey of turning acorns into bread. Here's where we are right now. We have our acorns and they are dried. They're good to be stored for a really long time. I've even stored them at this stage for up to several years. So next thing that we need to do is we actually need to crack them and then separate the nut meat from the shell. And in part two, I'm gonna be showing you how to do that as efficiently as possible. So stay tuned and I'll see you there.